What do you make of it? We're on now. Yep, we can do anything we want. <laughs> Hello. Say anything we want. And have a splendid time. I've never seen anything quite like it today. Stained. It was a pilgrimage to the studio. Damn! The color folks in the movies were always quaking and yassabossing and shuffling, huh? They didn't bear any resemblance to the majestic, hardworking black folks strutting around the south side of Chicago, where I was from. The men were tough and fierce, and the women were regal queens. A zillion Sometimes miles away from the get out army here of broad beam man at the get movies portrayed. You know, leave them things to God, son. Feel it like this. <laughs> scene of a movie called Coonskin on the street fight. I don't know what else this is. We cut this off. Here. Damn. Whenever you get on the plane, they steal your socks. What? In Europe, you know? Nah. All these birds come back without their socks. No, they don't. Like their socks are gone. No, they don't. And the ankles get shrunk. So like those pants are fashion real tight choices, round the ankles not, and then they ain't got no socks. Nah, bro, 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 bro. That's not a requirement. Like what happened? To get. Like nah, what did they do? They shake your they, socks? They at the they went to at the, the airport or over there. Come back in like you no longer can wear socks. Nah, man, it is. You know just like your socks are gone. Food. Like I said, socks gone. Nah, nah, man, I'm freaking out. The How come I can't have no socks? I like my socks. I like socks. Socks are fresh. I think You're socks are the good. best thing running sometimes. You socks are amazing. But like, yeah, you need to. how you gonna, what, what do y'all do to the brothers? And I noticed the ankles, like the pants. I guess if you ain't got no socks, there's no reason for your pants to be, you know, wide enough to accommodate shoes that require socks. I like my young niggas. I don't mean to get heavy, but 
We gotta say something. This man kneeled on a man's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Can you imagine that? This kid thought he was gonna die. He knew he was gonna die. He called for his mother. People watched it. People filmed it. And for some reason that I still don't understand, all these fucking police had their hands in their pockets. Who are you talking to? What are you signifying? Every institution that we trust lies to us. Uh, what, what I'm so afraid of is this actually is a calculated genocidal move in many instances because the threat of the kind of strength that these young people have uh, which may not always be comparable to the kind that our ancestors had, is so positive and so fearless that it frightens people. Sometimes I worry that it's a concentrated, thought-out effort to not have a young generation so strong and so beautiful. You can almost map, like in California, the dollar-to-dollar -dollar exchange coming out of the University of California budget going into the corrections budget. And I just saw a figure that said it costs more now to incarcerate someone in California than it does to send them through Harvard. So this is not an issue of resources. This is an issue of priorities. I get this fight crime like Batman. Hey, <laughs> the cap, what are you laughing? Yeah, you get a pretty, you get a pretty new charger and it goes really fast, and you get a siren on top, and it goes, wee, 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 and then you can go really fast, and you can go through the traffic, and you have a badge, and you can go get free donuts. I like donuts. Mm, taste good. Donuts are tasty. I like, I like powders, and sugar, and jelly filled. I like doing that. Give me a day. Give me a gun. I can. I can get. I have a gun. And I have a, a, a floating shot clip with the extension. And uh, I have a shotgun. Ooh, yeah, a shotgun. I have a man. I've got mace. Yeah, mace. And I have a taser. Yeah, I got a taser. I can shot people. And then sometimes. Sometimes they give us a dog. You know what they call the dog? The German Shepherds. They used to use German Shepherds in apartheid. You stood up there and took an oath. If this is not where you want to work at, then you need to take your behind somewhere else. I decided to work in an African American community because I'm African American and I wanted to make a difference. I'm a double minority. They would have got two hits for me because I'm African American and I'm a female. I'm here because I wanted to make a difference. chances drop when you encounter the police. It's, it's like you need a, a stopwatch going off as soon as you start dealing with the police because it's only a matter of time before it gets physical. And physical meaning they beat your ass or physical yeah. meaning they throw you in the car, physical meaning they take your idea, or physical meaning they shoot you. Choke you out when it's psychological. It's like such a part of the fabric of black life that what I went through couldn't have been too bad because I'm still here. I'm like, shit. 
Like that's the nah, my cousin. That's the attitude in the community. Like, oh, that ain't shit. And it's such a same thing. Like we seen this, and I did get off light. Like, and I and this is a consistent thing that happened through my life. Like up until this point, like I could think of a police incident less than a year ago. You know, like it doesn't stop. It don't stop. This is a fact that it's, it's scary to me think of this shit. Cause it's like you can't believe it. Nah, real quick. But I worry about my son, so but at least I know that his first you know harsh cop encounter, I was with him in the car. It's going five over on. 75 coming back home to get up on clay and uh i just put new tags on the truck and uh i was going five over but everybody drives 10 over so it wasn't a big deal i thought get pulled over this guy was extra aggressive i had him in the truck comes up hands on his thing put your hands out the car i was like wow like i had to stick my hands out the window and he rolls up, he's got his hand on his, uh, on his, uh, head of his piece. And I'm like, officer, please, if you see moving in the back of the car, that's my son, please don't shoot him. And he's like, I'm not going to shoot your fucking son. Oh, and it's like, shit, we got one of them. And then uh, I give him a license and registration, and he starts to berate me, you know. Yeah. Talking shit, going into all types of shit, talking about how he could arrest me. He's, you know, I could take you to jail if I want to. And, like, and I guess in theory he could, because he's a fucking cop, but but he could have justifiably like take you in jail, because I hadn't done it wrong, so I'd gone five over. See, that's the thing. State boys are there to get crazy. money. And so you going five over. He so, just know when he sees a black guy so, that I got felonies, I got child support, I got all these other stuff. So when he pulls you over, he's thinking, cha-ching, get paid. <laughs> and so he takes my ID and license and stuff and goes back to his car. And uh, Evan's in the back crying. He's freaking out and trying to calm him down. He goes, Daddy, could he be taking you to jail? I'm like, Son, that's a state boy. They do no favors. If there was anything daddy did wrong that they could have taken me to jail for, mommy be coming to get you, daddy be going to jail. But I've done nothing wrong and there's nothing on my record. But the dirty thing he did was when he was talking to me in the car, he was saying that he, he could take me to jail. But he and I both knew by that point after running my license and registration that my shit was clean as a whistle. It threw doubt in my son's mind about his own father. And that lasts long after the traffic stopped. And that's his first encounter with authorities. But the disrespect is... This is the first time it became clear to me that, that uh, shit, like, yo, man, it's, it's no joke. Like, they'll, yeah, they'll fuck you they, up. That's how they egg each other But that's me going to, uh, this is, this is, uh, going back to my high school and thinking I'm just, thinking I'm just going to try to get in this party. Right. Get my buddies with me. My man Ron is playing. This was the day before Papa guessed yeah, this shit. Like, we trend. still had phones that plugged into the wall, like. Like you had a range shit. And so I'm thinking, oh, it'll be fine. I can feel like my way in here. It'll be good. No problem. You know what I'm saying? All we're doing is trying to hear my boy play. And so we got denied entry. Get up there and two big security dudes, white dudes. We didn't really, we didn't notice. And I didn't we notice. Didn't he didn't pay attention to the fact that not only do we recall seeing their badges, their undercover cop badges, hanging around their necks at the time. And I don't know if they even had them out. You know, I don't remember. I just remember being upset that we had gone through this trouble to get down there and, and we had the money to get in. And my man's playing. Funky. And I got an ID from the high school. 
from the year before, but we just couldn't get in. Like, yeah, all we doing that, is wanting to dance with some clubs. Hear some good music, man. That's all we doing is support our guy. Our guy's playing. You know, we respected him because he was like, he was the guy from the south side that made it. Like, he was the one, of, one of the young guys that he was 17 when, when that thing on Warehouse came out. And he was like, oh, shit. You know, but the, 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 we just want to hear them play his track because we could identify with a guy that was just like us that came and give us hope. You know, there's a guy that, get, that ducked like how we ducked all the different pressures of the community we was going through that had to negotiate his way to get into the crib, yeah. you know, with the left and the right of, you know, GD and, 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 and Vice Lord over here and, and, and then all the, and then like the, the, the ones that were, that were neither, but were parade as that. And they mug you and steal some from you, uh, rob you up, and then some Looking of the practices they get where they realize, they just terrorize you just, just to show that they tough, like chill, beat the dude ass and they just jump all chill, over him. You know? And then, and you then you would just you would get so sick. you was you had a sense of pride, man, because he was up there rocking and, and, and like just the mere fact that the older dudes that were into that shit decided to give him a chance and make you think he would get a chance, but like. That was us. That was us. It was insulated, in the, and and he represented that. And so we was pissed. My guy said, "No, nah, you can't get in. No, nah, you can't get in. Sorry, you can't get in." And I was like, "Man, I'm so mad. Uh, cold outside. We we trekked all the way down on the bus. It was just like, dang. So I was just defeated. It's cold, cold as hell, kind of rainy." So I had the big winter coat on and I'm walking about 10, 15 feet in front of my boys, Leron and Spencer, and uh, you know, there's a there's a there's like a, a parking lot uh, street that kind of goes to the back of the building along the gymnasium with it, or the or maybe it's the lunch lunchroom that goes along that that building and then there's a driveway that comes uh, uh, south to 12th Street, which is where the buses are. So we were walking down that path heading to 12th Street, defeated, about to get back. And I'm, I'm 10, 15 feet in front of my friends, and I hear, which one of you motherfuckers was talking shit? And I was like, oh. Yeah. Instantly, I knew That's that I had, to, that I had to ante up for it and, op, and uh, cop to it, saying it, because not only did I say it, but I knew the protocol that if, if I didn't admit to it, then I wanted to grab the closest one to him and just been beat them. And so I said me. And so this cop walked up and he grabs me by the collar, the front of my coat. And he grabs the coat collar. And I didn't expect this. I thought he was going to punch me, but he didn't. He grabs it and he tightens it. He grabs it in his fist and then he twists it. So I can't breathe. And then he lifts me off the ground like the Incredible Hulk. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I just thought, oh, my God. What the fuck is happening? Like, what? And shit. Panic. Like, I could yeah. just, just panic. Totally panic. And, and, like, I'm Looking like, left, I right, can't I breathe. Can't, can't do nothing about it. Can't shit. move. Like, can't get out of the situation. Why I'm scared that... explain what that feeling is like is, is the last moments of knowing that like like you're shocked like and I'm thinking about all oh, because I wanted to get into a party I'm about to die fuck like I, at least shoot through your your mind instantly as I'm sitting there being my life you know I'm bugging out and I, the last images I see are Leron and Spencer grabbing the cops arms to try to get them to let me go and then everything goes black. And then the next memory I have, where the where the, where consciousness returned or whatever, is a uh, up close view of the ground. And I'm I'm back on Earth. I I push myself up and I realize as I'm standing up that I've totally wet my pants. And then I. Uh, I don't know what I said. I think I said to my friend something. Lucky, let me go. <laughs> Just bravado to the end. Moved out to the suburbs, thinking I could chase that dream. 
And I had this Mustang, this black Mustang, and it was all souped up, redone. I mean, we had just moved in, and uh, coming home, it's like a sunset. And I'm, I realized when I'm coming down, what I think was uh, Maras, this cop tailing me. And he's about, I don't know, four cars back. So it's right at that area where you kind of like, all right, he noticed me, but he ain't on him, you on me, but he on me. And so I, uh, I make the right turn at the end of my block. And I signaled. I know I signaled. And he pulls the chair, he runs a sirens on and it's starting to get dark so the lights are flashing off of all the houses in a really quiet neighborhood and everybody has those windows that you can see out the front of those big ones he's sitting behind me for what seemed oh 20 minutes easy and then uh see saunters up real slow says, is this your car? I say, yeah, it's my car. Where do you live? Believe it or not, officer, I can see my living room from here. I literally lived one block up and my house is at the direct end of the blocks. And so I say, yeah, right there, right ahead of me. I live right there. He's like, what's the address? And I said, 23187 Glad Hill. I said, officer, is there anything I've done? He said, well, you made a right turn and didn't signal. And I said, officer, I signaled. He said, no, you didn't. That's why I pulled you over. I said, okay. So I'm just like, okay. I'm just the only one on the pole. Extra units in this situation. Just make it worse. In this 20 minutes, about three of our neighbors have come outside on the porch. And watching what's going on, like all these white people just looking at me in this this I mean, '88 Mustang, notchback, clean as fuck, cow, really turbo, white boy on the front of the hood, modified, feel right, cause every branded thing, you know, got a white no kid, like, just the notchback. You know, he asked me for my license, so I gave it to him. And when he saw that the address was true, if you had one of those. You know, heat meters to see if somebody's got a fever or something. You know, infrared or something. Yeah, he'd have been well past the yellow. He wouldn't have been green. He'd have been real red. <laughs> red and yellow. But, um, but he wrote me a ticket. But no, no signal on the right turn at the end of my block. No stop sign. <laughs> no stop sign. And uh, basically, my you know, whole so life, take the bus on, my friends, I would always see the and black face the people and know that I was gonna hide it from you. Was being disrespectful and say something because you've seen those images on you know, the cartoons, but like, I, I had never no seen any white men do that in yeah, real life friend, until I played a party for Rush Hour at the Paradiso. I'm playing heaven, all of a sudden, I look to my left. Faces and Afro beads. Exactly. Uh, that pretty much colored the way that I'm doing. Just welcome you to be comfortable. Relax. The reality is this: is that there are a lot of white people out there who want to come to grips with white supremacy, who want to talk about their vulnerability, who want to talk about how they invest in innocence and fragility. Don't hurt my feelings, black people, because when you speak about race a certain way, uh, it offends me. You can't get killed. Unless you march with us. <laughs> so it drives you kind of crazy. It's that I think that we have to get rid of the illusions, oh, we have to get rid of the poison, Fringe. we have to get rid of the lies. And one way well, to do that not. is expose it and dissect it. It's just typically been the situation when I've had black people, or particularly black artists, try to talk about race and how it plays into what they do. Your job's at risk if you offend the wrong people, your fan base, and all that. 
But how does that stop you from being you? You were you before they knew you. You still you. You're not you're afraid to be who you already are. I like you know nobody what it wants is. to think it's about this. Man. To be a black Going man out and exposed. Yeah. But it's best. This had too much nigga. That word is fucked. But you did say nigga first to me. To the There's no exception. First time I just thought I was racial slur. It's in Chicago. Negro. It's just some jacked up body. Our body's made for drag car niggas. I've been watching since then. A lot of different ways. So I'm a user. Y'all said it first. I was at a DJ dinner six years ago in Italy. I was talking about one of my buddies and one of the people there. Just call me shit. Oh, nigga problem. See we still food has play. So I feel like I'm qualified to talk with any way I want. Cause I've been treated as such Even down to not being paid yeah. Dimensions That $20,000 you owe me Really coming in handy right now that I Ain't no more spinning for you It seems Okay And uh, The only City that the world refers to Quit playing. Shoot, shoot, shoot.
It's gonna be a brand, a marketing campaign on, on money on my mind. I'm gonna make a T-shirt. Mm, a T-shirt gonna say money, 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 money. I'm the money on the mind. My money, the trap money boys. That's what they call me, little young big trap money boy. Do 
little young big in the trap money boy. Yeah. See, I started rapping about 1983. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about 1983. Uh-huh. But you know my style. Yeah, I try to keep it current, you know. Because I grew up in that rice tea. But they know here with these kids doing. You know, I, I could take half my old rhymes. Take two verses out the whole thing. And I got like a whole album. All I got to do is keep repeating the same thing over again. You heard what these niggas doing? They don't get it. They don't get it. As long as the beat, you know, that's where the beat, and you make the beat with the iPhone. I, man, fuck the studio. I got an iPhone beat. It's cold. It's cold. Man, look here. And when I get the money coming, ain't nobody gonna say nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm out there trap. Because I got no time for what I don't want. I mean, even if I ain't, I ain't got no money for the trap, you know what I'm saying? But if I say I got the trap, you know, it's cool. Ain't nobody gonna check me. Ain't nobody coming. I ain't putting the address on where, where the fake is. You know what I'm saying? Nah, they ain't fucking with me. Shit. These people download my shit. I'll be out for club banging. So like I said, first I trap, then I grind. Money, 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 money on my mind. First I trap, then I grind. Money, 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 money on my mind. I trap so much, it's all the time. Money, 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 money on my mind. That time be worrying about my kind of rap. Money, 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 money on my mind. First I trap, then I grind. Money, 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 money on my mind. Yo girl cute, but my girl fine. Money, 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 money on my mind. You say you trap, nigga, you lie. Money, 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 money on my mind. By asking you a question about race. Um, money, 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 money on my mind. Money, 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 money on my mind. Money, 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 money on my mind. tired of the demonization of women i understand that you say that's the word you use because you choose to do it and don't get it twisted men in my generation use the same word but we had the good enough sense not to go in public and celebrate our rhetorical pathology by demonizing the very woman whose wounds we have taken our life Mm. start being respectful to black women there was a time let's say my mother you know what i mean my aunts and things like that they would say okay if that's the way you establish your manhood Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go for it Mm -hmm. and my generation says hey Mm-hmm. No good. Okay. You must okay. establish I'll a new it. base. I'll do that. And, and we are as a group demanding that a new base be established. Yeah, but be careful as a woman of what you demand of a man. I demand that he be a man. Yeah, just, but you can't say you're, the but provision you can't, Yeah, but you can't say you demand it. You have to, you have to suggest it. So that, that's your <laughs> ego that says that. No, I, I demand it. Now you deal with that.
now. Everything that they built, they've never been able to share with it. I don't even want to hear that. You know, what society have done just took our black men and destroyed their men. Oh, that's what they've done. They ain't the better. One of the uh, statements that you made was that you didn't have the strength to uh, to marry a black man. Mm. How would you? I had married first a black man, and I wasn't a big enough woman to help him. I didn't. I married him because I had nobody. I ran away from life as a chorus girl at 16 and, and a stepfather who was white that I didn't understand. And uh, then I found out how difficult it was for a black man to live at that time and to exist. Yes, and I believe in my turn But mightn't it all be very revolutionary and you might be the better woman for understanding that they, at this point they need you to walk a few feet behind and get their manhood together. So if you take that, then I'm going to do whatever the brothers need. Now, I mean, I've done a lot of research on slavery and talk about wiping out and whipping off our people. They did it to the black man. They did it. For me, by my man. That's what I'm talking about. 
a living thing and not as a theory. Because what we need to do is to uh, um, reestablish a new value system. That's what black people right. need. And how exactly, and how do we go about that? We go about it the way you go about daily work. First of all, you decide what you want. You establish your values and you start to live it. Mm -hmm. And the people in your community, you start talking to your neighbors. You get yourself together first. Exactly. Then you get your community together. We're in a group. And you get your neighbors yeah. together. We're in a group. Right. And then you can move on out. <laughs> but in the beginning, you have to make sure you got yourself together. Right. Right. Okay. We have to start right here. We have to start out into the community educating the children. Educating ourselves. Because once we educate ourselves, the children will become educated. Because we, we are the ones that teach the children. Keep the drama. How you gonna be pro black with a white baby mama? Shit, hey, hey, go hey, down hey, to Alabama. Right? You know the Yo, situation, get the drama. Drama be in the middle. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hi, Nia. This is your daddy. Hi, I miss you. I'm really worried about what's going on with this. How are you? Can you please remind your mommy? That you have a daddy and a grandma that really worries about you. Can you just give us a call or a text? Let us know that you're okay through all this crazy stuff. Because we love you and worry about you.
you're not addressing uh, Are you your answer to my question. Are you referring to me as Tricky Dick? No, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't think that integration should be the number one thrust of uh, uh, our civil rights leaders anyway, because I think what we're really talking about in this country is economic development. Woo! Because I found Economic that, development, all people. Well, we're talking about... Well, how come you're people. black people? How we're come you don't do it for well, black people? How come you don't do it for white people? I'll tell you why. Huh? I'll tell you why. How come you don't do it for everybody? How come you're always can black I, people? Can I give, talk about all people. Can I give you an answer? I think can we I, understand please. the question. Can I give you an answer? Do you mind? Go ahead. If you're ready, I'll give you time. Okay, Governor. Uh, what I'm really saying is that there are some people that have suffered in this country, poor people generally, but let's say that uh, we have various ethnic groups in this country that have attained a certain kind of equality. Black people are more or less, along with the Indians, uh, on the last rung of the ladder. Can I finish, Governor? Can I finish? <laughs> okay, do you mind? You now, what I'm really way. saying is that I feel that the way to bring about equality of black people in this system what about equality of white people? Now, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm not black people. Well, what about equality of all people? If you interrupt me, Governor, I can't talk to you. Well, I'm gonna, you're just going to talk about black people. Don't include all people. I try to include all people. You know, you know you're just interested in the black. Why don't you tell these people that in, in the line of Georgia, where you keep talking about the South, that there's percentage-wise, more black people are professional business people, industrial Governor, leaders, can I, more can I, in our I, state house I, elected officials than any other state in the country. Can I interrupt you? Can I interrupt you? Be all right, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. See, I'm not really here to uh, fight with you. I'm only trying to have a discussion with you. I'm not going to fight with you either. And I'm trying to use the technique. There's a lot of people out there there watching you, and I want you to be fair about all people, not just black people. We got a lot of people in this country. I can understand that, but you do know I have a reputation, right? And I saw you. I I saw saw you. I saw you. Tell me what your reputation is. I saw you bring that state trooper back there, you know, behind the curtain. I know you brought it back there for a reason. situation for it to come out of people. Compression creates shit. That compression. Pull it up with the sound bumping with your boys in the car and looking over and seeing the well-to-do white couple in the BMW lock the door. Turn the nose up. You know, the feeling when you listening to Jack Your Body for the third time. You got one headphone ear off because you're still walking down the street. It's getting dark and then out of nowhere. You hear nigga. Nigga! Going past as you try to get to the bus stop to go home. 
past rush time. It's like seven. You done bullshitted downtown. And now you realize why you go home with the pack. Because you can get preyed upon when you're by yourself. They always wonder why but this motherfucker's not paying attention again. God damn. Hey man, this terrible driver's out this motherfucker. Go on. What? Act like a nigger. The fuck? Motherfuckers can't drive. Keep your lane, goddammit. No lane respect, bitch ass nigga. I, I, hey man, I think. If you're gonna fucking drive, keep your eyes in front of you. Simple. Fucking simple. First time ever, man. Uh, I got in at a crazy hour to me, but it was seemingly like we just getting done. And I was just fast in the car with a cut from the cab I had on the fry shops. So I wanted to get some fries. So I said, So as I'm crossing the street, the star, all of a sudden, white pants, kind of a mini pant, with a green stripe and a blue siren on the top, moves up in front of my bag, and the two uh, cops come out all the time. The driver was at the rear truck, heading towards me by the time the passenger was three feet. Brakes apply me. My foot's on there. Make sure I stop. And just started motion for me to get into the eyes van. Right now, I wasn't getting in the van. It wasn't happening. So, so I started pointing to my, my front pocket one. with one hand up, saying U.S. Oh, passport, you? U.S. passport. I'm just U.S. passport, so U.S. passport, U.S. passport, U.S. passport. That's so all I kept saying. And it, no, as he keeps motion for me to get in the van, the other one pulls out a nice stick, says something to him in German, and prods my hand while the other one starts going in my pockets and then pulls out my passport and a bunch of change. He studies my passport, counts my change, and this whole thing is just going on in the middle of the night, in the middle of the street, and then finally, finally he finishes counting, throws my passport on the ground, my change, Chef Swasser starts walking towards the van. Yo, and then I found out I got it off easy. <laughs> That kind of shit, you know. But um, but real talk. Um, hell no, what's up? real talk? Fake talk. Um, real talk. Uh, yeah, you can still get guy. What do we do? I know the way this state thinking is so good. You got people that don't give a fuck about the rules, dictating the pricing, dictating what's value, dictating what's paid attention to, and. The, the argument is if you're popular, as long as you have the popularity, you should shut the fuck up and let them lavish whatever it is and support whatever it is they're doing because they chosen you to be their one. But like, I don't know how many times motherfuckers will tell me, oh man, you're gonna love this. It's, it's just like what you're doing. You gotta get it through your head that you have no idea what I'm doing. Well, I've heard you. You sound like this. Right, as if you had a change since the first 10 releases or something. It's blocked. Shit. They still owe you money, fool. Mate. Would it make you feel any better if you knew that? I've learned new things, you know. A few at least. We're on a mission from God. Don't you blast him in here. Don't you blast him.
there's an economic thing involved. No schools. Deplorable living situations. No good food. And don't think that don't have a fact. We have a gun to talk about what it means to raise up people that can have their bodies and minds and emotions intact and be able to soar good things so they can survive the madness of the West. But instead, we shoot each other. Just like they used to shoot at my friends. It's funny that today, the only friends I got from Chicago that I came up with now, they all got into the music. I think it got one dog in Chicago that, uh, that didn't totally immerse himself in it. Like, that's my, that's one of my dogs, that's one of my closest dogs.
folks want me to say, yeah, these came from oh, your, your grandma's basement. You know? Because, I mean, if you're going to grab from the roots, you, you're going to get a responsibility. See, see that's, that's the part you don't understand. You don't get to come this close to what this is without putting something in. What are you doing for people that have to come back to these conditions? Do you care? you investigating the conditions and that's cool but just don't front don't don't act that familiar with people and definitely don't think that you can challenge nobody play your position Ladies and gentlemen, Rufus Watson. Wow, wow. I went out to my car. Mm -hmm. Said I went to my car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Police officer say, What is it? You got to pull over. Cause you ain't got no tail lights well. She was tricking you. And now I got the blues. Mmm, yeah. I got the blues. Don't be saying He gave me the news. He didn't knock it out. My tail light was out. So it was just oh. a few. So right. I was asking what the traffic stop was about to say there. I said he was My helping tail you. Light was out. Wow. Well, I don't know. They give you a ticket? Oh, I got the blues. I don't know why you got the blues. Why, why are you saying? You got the tin and blues. I mean, he ain't put you out your car. Did you go to go, the auto parts store? Go got the gift store? now. He ain't even write you a ticket. Tin and blues. They got fuses and stuff. You got to nah, choose. Nah, 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 I think you might get rid of them. Nah, nah, I mean, tin and blues. Wow. Tin and blues. At the gas station. They gave me the news. Can't sing, no way. I got to choose the tin and fuse blues. Wow, tin and fuse. It was blown, gave me the blues. Tin and fuse. Wow, tin and fuse. Wow, tin and fuse. Ooh, give me the blues. Yeah, tin and fuse. 
expression mm-hmm. man, helped you out, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Singing songs. Tina and Blue. Oh, yeah. Give me the few. I'm saying, you can get it. Ja, super cool. Let's go to the back high. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the only time someone ever told me to stop playing. It's at this famous club. Yeah, I was supposed to play from two to six. And I'm playing, doing my thing. And Crowd's filling up, there's two floors. Downstairs they're playing techno, upstairs I'm, they got me. There's another room where there's just some other stuff going on. Now I got a friend of mine there, and then I got my ex-wife's sister's best friend. Who's in attendance. What's up? That's, that's who was there. So. We having fun, playing music. Things are going well. Bars filling up. People buying drinks. Giving them the business. Then I dropped tempo Laughing, into dancing. Uh, Karen O. And at exactly 4 o'clock, this owner comes over to me and says, Stop playing. And I said, What for? He said, You stop playing too, too much soul. Why? I said, What? Why? Must not want too many black people in the place or something. Later I'd find out that's the po- that's the door policy. <laughs> I was pulling up people from downstairs, that's what uh ex-wife's sisters best friend said. I see. But the rest of the night got worse cause it turns out Gert is Superman EMS trained. The ex-wife said this girlfriend's best friend's friend was having a seizure outside. When we left, when we were talking, I went over to the bouncer and said, can you move the line because the ambulance was coming. This girl was saving his life. And the guy said, the wife. Was my wife. That was said, my mission. The guy's under having a seizure. He said, somebody has a seizure oh, no, there no, every week. I'm, I'm not moving the line. I'm not moving the line. I was like, dang. I just put my numbers in this place. I just made them money. Dang. This is terrible. They just told me to stop playing. Word. <laughs> Luckily, the ambulance came and the line moved itself. The guy was terrible and I felt like hell. And I came there to beat it. To be clear, see, I was this was years ago. Almost a decade. Kind of water. But since then, I've heard of several instances where they turned brothers away that were playing there. They don't let black men in. And might as well put whites only on the front. <laughs> Apparently the guy was running around saying I was drunk. Nah, man. And besides that, the bird car? Even if I was, that's it? Sheesh. But you know, that's the standard. You can't talk about that because, you know, the black boy, you won't be playing it. Funny, the resident asked me to come back and play about two years later. I said, nah. That resident's girl, Jess, he ain't a resident at that place. Crazy night. I'm glad everybody gets their money off the place. And you know, I go around and I spend a lot of time with all of you. Do business, eat your food, put money in your pockets. And I love the music. I really do. But in the end, you know what always happens? What I think? You act like the fucking niggers that you are. Huh? Isn't that right? This is 
Rufus Watson. I will be performing live a cappella down at the uh, the baggage claim terminal of uh, Southwest Airlines in Detroit. Uh, baggage claim, waiting on my luggage. I'm gonna do a uh, I'm gonna do a a cappella set. Me and the trumpeter and the backup triangle player. Uh, we gonna do a set, you know, but. You got to get down there uh, before the bags come around so that we can uh, properly harmonize for y'all. I, uh, yeah, so, so uh, I, we haven't, we don't really know when the plane is landing. So when, when we get that straight, we'll give another message so that we can uh, figure out which or where and when we can, uh, you know, get down and everything so we know when to tell y'all <coughs> excuse me yeah that's my glaucoma uh my glaucoma uh uh medicine reaction it's a it's a it's a pleasant reaction if you know what i mean uh we're gonna be down there at, uh the baggage claim uh southwest airline flight 29 from uh new mexico we're coming off tour uh we doing the acapella set, all our hits, you know, uh, particularly uh, Find the Funk, we're going to do that acapella. Me, the trombone player, uh, maybe the keyboard player, because maybe he, uh, I don't know, he sometimes misses flight, you know. Uh, we all going to get down for y'all acapella set, but only uh, while we waiting on our bags. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's that's basically it, yeah. Oh, this is Rufus Watson signing off. <laughs> yeah, all right. Fighting funk.
flat out. It's a different story over here than it is over there. It's a different story from where I'm at, from where you are, personally. And that's everybody. The difference in the distance between colonialism and slavery has to do with the ways in which the society has utilized us. Just as we're cousins, so are they. I'm in here of uh, the iconic symbols being torn down. And I smile.
force me into agreeing with you just by, um, you know, calling me a bunch of names. He agreed that this is black music and went on to disagree with other things, but I didn't have a problem with how it was said, nor his viewpoint. I know how to separate the person from what they do. You know what I mean? I could separate, I could have love for you, but not agree with your ways and actions or your point of view. See, disagreement doesn't translate to hate. Just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I hate you. I'm not gonna just agree with everything you say. He did say that this is black music, right? Yes. Right. Okay, that's all you need to say. Anything after that, that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But you got, you can't deny that this is black music. It started as black music. And although other people are participants in it, we are still the makers and the owners of this. As far as the intellectual property of it. Yeah, we sold ourselves out a long time ago. With these record companies. You want to talk about the owners of the physical product, the records and the CDs. Yeah, we done sold ourselves out a long time ago. But as far as the intellectual property, we the makers and the owners of this. So all I'm saying is the makers and the owners are the ones who have the, the say-so in where this thing is going. some other shit like if it's origin lies somewhere else then those people with the origin are the ones that have in my opinion the say so of the direction and the course that that said thing uh, should be heading into all I'm saying is don't come in the house and start redecorating without talking to the motherfuckers who own the house. It's that simple. There's nothing racist about it. There's nothing, you know, exclusionary about it. It's just, it's just facts. So to say that I'm ignorant, when really your answer is based in ignorance. But I forgive you, my man. I ain't got no hard feelings against none of y'all. Cause guess what? You have the right to disagree with what I say. Just like I have the right to disagree with what you say. And I don't have to resort to calling you, you know, names and all this other shit to try to prove my point because my shit is rooted in intelligence. I deal with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It's, it's, it's not about being racist. Uh, like I said, plenty of white people have contributed But they're not the originators of it. Okay? You're coming in after the fact. And that's cool. I appreciate your contributions, but this is our shit. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't matter. You can infuse it with any music because this is a universal music. So I understand um, how people say, oh, how can it just be your? Yeah, well, black people created some shit that's universal. It still comes from us, but we created some shit that all cultures can find some sort of um, connection to, okay? But that doesn't mean it's yours, <laughs> okay? Just because you're a participant in something doesn't make you the owner, and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> now, $120, please. <laughs> What? Two hundred forty
you must have the phone. All up in your trunk. Make it pump. Shake it rough. Fat fuck. Shake it rough. Fat fuck. Shake it rough. Committee coming. Here they go.
Nigga don't know you about to be sports with the thing I'm cooking gonna eat real good. I got the chicken on the cauliflower. We got the chicken on the cauliflower. We got the black and cat fish sitting on right now. All the things you put off. Forgot, didn't realize. From a perspective not possible when you're in it, you start poking holes in it, seeing what's wrong with yourself. What you gotta fix.
don't be a surprise when you look to the left and the right and they don't look just like you. It's still love. But can you trust it? Love yourself so that you can. And when it's hard times, look around to those who have loved us and thought about us and wrote about us. Well, and one of the strengths of the Afro-American, certainly the last 20, 30 years, is that we have recognized we are not Americans. On one hand, on the other yeah. hand, we are the only true inheritors That's of right. the place called America. That's right. The ways that one can't quite see yet, we already have it. It's one, it's one of the reasons for the panic. We have to effect it. Yes. And we have to know it, and we have to make sure that everybody else... We have to change it. We have paid too much for it to be able to abandon it. We never abandon it. I don't think that that's a question, because where else are we going to go? I mean, nobody else wants us in any case, In any case, in any case my, father, and my father's father's paid too much for it. I've paid too much for it. I'm yes. only 28. Yes. Because <laughs> I deserve it, you know, to do whatever I want to do with it. My theory is that the world divides into sort of like intelligent and um, weak and strong, <laughs> which is awful. I mean, it's real awful for me to say things like that. But there's so many stupid people. <laughs> I think it divides between the people who have a certain kind of daring and the people who don't. What you have to do is concentrate on what is essential. And not, and not, and not be sidetracked by very disturbing details. After all, you know and I know that the individual does exist. No, he does, but sure. I'm concerned about it, I guess, bro. Particularly because there's so many young kids who want to believe. And I see those hopeful little faces. And I know that they are just as eager to become, you know, fascists as anything else. That they don't really, what they want is to believe. Then I begin to feel an obligation to say, okay, try believing in yourself. You're trying to tell a child something which is which transcends all those categories. So he won't become what you see all around you every day. <laughs> One trans. You know. But that has to be dealt with because they're constantly being fed that their ego mm -hmm. needs to be supplemented to what is constantly called the energy which makes no sense to me. Because why should somebody who doesn't even know you run your life? Because I really see so many games being run by uncreative, stupid, stupid people. Somebody's got to pay the rent. I can't put you on the streets. That's what you say. We have tried to make you able to pay your rent, or my rent, or our rent. We have found that there are not enough jobs, there's not enough money for you to do that. Now, why can't we try it my way? I think the only thing that's really changed is the black woman.
because there was a time, let's say my mother, you know what I mean, my aunts and things like that, they would say, okay, if that's the way you establish your manhood, I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. And my generation says, hey, mm -hmm. no good. Okay. You must okay. establish I'll a agree. new base. I'll agree with and, that. and we are as a group demanding that a new base be established. Yeah, but be careful as a woman of what you demand of a man. I demand that he be a man. Yeah, just, but you can't say you, the provision you, part. Yeah, but you can't say you demand it. You have to, you have to suggest it. Well, that, that's your <laughs> ego that says that. No, I, I demand it. Now you deal with that. I'll even I go demand with that. that you be a man, and I don't think that that's asking too much. Because if I wanted a provision, you get an army surplus kit mm -hmm. that provides. Mm -hmm. I need a man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and black men have, have, have always been offered to provisions. People are either going to eat or starve to death. You know, the men of the yeah, the, the, yeah. the people were starving and they were still the men. Had to be that way through that horrendous kind of war. But it had to be that way because sometimes you are not able to feed your family. Sometimes you are not able to clothe your family. Do you then also deprive them of your manhood and of the input that a man has? Who teaches my son how to pee? Yeah, but you're, but, you see? Yeah, but you're talking. There's something because all I can, all I know that works in the world is a relationship. Yes, all right. Okay, that that's all that's going to work. It takes two people to have a relationship. Yeah, but but it, but the relationship. If you don't have a dream, fake it. But the relationship, you can't fake a dream. You got to fake it because we don't have dreams these days. How the hell can you have a dream? For what?
moratorium on the entry of certain Asians out in California, a quota, if you will, former or not, where they limit the number of Asian brothers and sisters who will get in school because it was killing the numbers of white folk. As long as white folk were getting in over black and brown people, wasn't no problem. I'm sorry. It's about a meritocracy. And merit determines the distribution of goods like employment or getting a seat in the school. But when the Asians start whipping that white ass, all of a sudden, it became a problem. The quota got enforced, formally or informally, and now white competition with others who can beat them is regulated. So my point is, from the very beginning, white folk have been treated to an extraordinary level of, of privilege, and part of that privilege means I don't have to face the best and the brightest. Before, before black people could play basketball, it was Bob Cousy, it was George Mikan, it was all, and these are all great players. But you ain't Will Chamberlain. You ain't Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You ain't, you ain't Dr. J. You're not Michael Jordan. You're not Kobe Bryant. You're not LeBron James. So they competed, but they rigged the competition in their favor and got mad at black and brown and yellow and red people by saying, you people just want a handout. You want somebody to give something to you. You don't want to face the stiff competition against those who are better. No, sir. What you don't understand is that whiteness is built in with the ability to rig the competition in favor of the white guy. That's why Donald Trump's presidency is so apropos. And this is why a lot of white people don't want to recognize it's not simply about a crypto fascist creep in America. It's not about the denial of democracy. It's all that, but it's also about the fact that a mediocre white boy is occupying the most powerful position in the world, and he is manifestly inferior and incapable of manning up or intellectualing up to be able to fit the office for which he has been elected. Woo! <laughs> Shit. This nigga reporting all the goddamn news. Oh, no. What? I wouldn't like know, know, nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. He just talking from, talking from a goddamn visible armchair. Nigga ain't talking about nothing. I'll show you. Nigga, boy, what we have? What nigga cut? Nigga read a book, it's supposed to be a PhD. Nigga, give me. Nigga, give me nigga what won't be caught about that. Got there. If the rope won't be the cowboy, I would here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would here. Yeah. And see, that pay be another. Mm-hmm. I pay the buck down. They put them dollars in their G string, baby. Yes, they will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they like to see it move around when you do your time. So you get the full effect of their fantasy. <sighs> Show some teeth, bug some eye, shake a little booty on while you play the music. Sweat, they love niggas sweat. In a world where black people, where Latinos, where Asians, where Arabs, all these different people are experienced as problem people. And that, well, we're going to deal with the, 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 the person of color problem when, in fact, uh, racism is essentially a white problem. And that for you to understand what racism is about, you're going to be so uncomfortable. You're going to be so different from who you see yourself to be now that, uh, it, you know, there's just no way for you to get it from where you're sitting. 
And I'm not saying that you could never get it. I mean that uh, that you need to uh, step outside of your skin and step outside of what uh, seems really comfortable and familiar to you and launch out into some real, for you, unknown territory. And you haven't gone out there like you haven't, uh, you know, gotten in proximity to uh, black people, as you say, because you don't have to. And that's part of what it means to be American to me, is to, uh, to have all these things that you can do if you want to, that you don't have to do if you don't want, uh, if you don't want to do. And there's a way in which American and white and human become synonyms. That why can't we just treat each other as uh, human beings? To me, when I hear it from a white person, it means why can't we all just pretend to be white people? I'll pretend you're a white person, and then you can pretend to be white. Why don't you eat what I eat? Why don't you drink what I drink? Why don't you think like I think? Why don't you feel like I feel? God damn it, I'm so sick and goddamn tired of hearing about that. I'm sick of that. That's what it means to be human being to me. That's what it means to be white. That's what it means to be American. Why don't you come the hell over here? That's what I hear every goddamn day. And you know that I can't come over there. You know that this skin and that this hair and that this way that I talk and that I think and I feel will never. somebody's ancestors house this is older than you way older than you you were never invited <laughs> now granted you take your ideas you run with 
with it, you create your own shit, that's great, you create your own universe of it, please, go right ahead, there's nothing wrong with being inspired, nothing wrong with all, oh my god, you can't have all of it, you can't have all of it, sorry, we're still here, there's still black people, we will still teach our children to notice our food, we will still continue to put expression on we will still connect to the music, the way that we connect to the music, and there's nothing you can do about that. You have to connect to it the way you connect to it. And we have to connect to it the way we do. Don't be jealous. Your jealousy is shown. Don't be jealous. That's because you, don't, you can't quite figure out when it's going to hit. You can't quite figure out why it sounds like that. You can't find, quite figure out why it's got that swing on it and yours doesn't. That swing is something else. That swing is pain. You can't program that pain. You can't program that. Because that pain programs you. Your mama ain't never been called a nigga. Your mama ain't so light that other black kids will call your mama white and it offends you. That's never had to happen to you and it can't happen to you. You don't know what that's like. And you don't come from a place where with somebody's mixed skin, that light bronze tone, that butterscotch look, that just kicking. You come from a place where that happens, that means that a white person and a black person love each other and each other. Typically, we come from a place where that's a sign of rape <laughs> three or four generations ago. Deal with that. You can't deal with that. <laughs> you can't stand where I stand. These are the facts. These are not, this is not violence. And so, like, here's the problem. Whenever we start to talk about the realities of what creates this music, everybody gets turned off. Everybody turns tails around. Nobody wants to stare it in the face because nobody can deal with that. Because nobody can make money off of that. Except, of course, if you don't know, standing from my perspective, you can make money off of it. A little bit. But you still got to live it. In fact, in America, that's your requirement. You better cash in your pain. You don't cash in your pain, you're a dumbass, as far as I'm concerned. Because somebody else going to cash in on you. They either going to cash in on your back work, you're, they either going to break your back and cash in on it, they're going to they gonna cash in on your mind, they're going to cash in on your, your history, they're going to cash in on your property, they will cash in everywhere. And the they that is cashing in is the idea of cashing in. It's, it's Everyone's participating in it. It's no longer just black versus white. We know who has the most control out of the situation, top of the pyramid. But it's no longer this white man on the, on the throne. It's all types of people cashing in any way they can. It's other people who come from other places cashing in on the cashing in on the cashing in. We're at a place where we're past all these things, but these historical things have to be understood so that we can know how to go forward so that you and I can have some kind of accord. So you and I know our places in terms of how to preserve the culture.
You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you, you ever heard my new single? It's on iTunes. It come on iTunes. I got a deal. They gave me uh, some Henny, some weed, and my own show. They gave me Henny weed and the own show. And, and I could play whatever I want as long as I don't go for budget. But the budget is, they keep me I keep my rhymes up, and like I said, I've been rapping since '83, so I got a bunch of rhymes. You know, I was trying to do, do the, you know, the hip hop thing and everything, but this the track thing. Nah, no, I got money to make out here. You understand? So, like I said, it's fishy because I take one quarter to one fifth of the rhymes I had wrote, and I just repeat my rhyme. Real money is merchandise. You know what I'm saying? Like special t-shirts. You know, like uh, you know, at point of sale type purchases where you uh create a market, like a, a branding sort of thing. You, you know, but like I said, you know, this little young big in the uh in the trap in the trap out boys, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's my cool. It's spice, it's a few of us, you know. It's got my cool, my name, and, uh, and Demetrius. And, uh, you know, Demetrius, you know, he had a problem. You know, he sometimes, he a pastor on Tuesdays at a local church. And, you know, but, so we can't really tour on Tuesdays. He's making that up. They're messing with his house on the wall, because he, he got that on the back of the I mean, uh, you know, praising the word, not backing out the Lord. And I ain't, you know, just, you know, he does his thing. You know what I'm saying? He got to- a tutor, a tutoring thing. And so he make beats. You know, he don't be all about the rhymes. So he don't really know what to be. You know what I'm saying? He just make them cause, you know, like, you know, he like to get drunk. He fuck with the penny. So we get the penny. And it's all paid for. See what I'm saying? Like, I get the one from one sponsorship. And then I flip it, and then it's, it's like it's paying for itself. I get the free beats from the cousin, you know. And then I take the beats, I throw my rhymes on them. And then next thing you know, I don't got t-shirts, a brand, all that, nigga. Lil Young Big, nigga. Lil Young Big, nigga. I'm going to be in the parking lot of our parts. No, I probably ain't gonna park. I'm gonna be, I'm a, you know, I be, I be down at Bell Isle, you know, when they get warm. Well, if they, if they ain't charging that week, you know, I, you might catch me, you know, grassy to something, like grassy to Mac, you know, what I'm saying at the gas station. I will be having my CDs, you know, you know, but like CDs ain't really. I got like little download cards, you know. CDs old school, but I still do it because it's a little turn, a little coin, you know. I'm a, but my boy got the, he do the movies, so, you know, he said he could hook me up, you know, if I buy the blanks. I give him the blanks, and he make a whole bunch of them, and I could just flip them off the side of the car, you know, a couple of dollars, you know, ain't no big deal. But, you know, just to put it out there, you know, if he got the latest movies and everything, you know, the new Marvel shit coming out and all that, you know, if he go on and do that, then he go ahead. Like I said, you know, it's like it covers itself. Cause you know it's like uh it's marking it's branded. Like I said, this little young big and the trap house boys. And uh like I said, my single is first I trap, then I grind. Money, 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 money on my mind. I trap so much, I trap all the time. Some of us are looking at the day as a new one because there's simply nothing else left of what was before. That we gotta go forward. Even if it's forward to oblivion, it's forward. Because if it's over, it's over, and there's nothing you can do, so you might as well accept it. The illusion that you can avoid what's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's not an if, it's a win. So. If we're gambling every day with it, let's make it worth something. 
And let's make it happen now. Oh, shit.
don't even like that in play. That's uncomfortable, right? To think about that? But, you know. What you gonna do? 